Are you right, sir? Someone threw this stone, and, and this was wrapped round it. What now is happening? There's been an incident. If I could ask you both to come inside the hotel. Oh, no. Dr. Fintry, Marsha Kemp, Daily Echo. We spoke on the phone. Someone threw a rock at the window beside me. I'm not sure I have anything to say to you. In fact, I'm sorry, but the interview's off. Intimidation. Don't let them frighten you. We can handle this. I'll get onto my editor and have the helicopter here in no time to fly you out. You'll be safe. So you're the troublemaker. Be careful, George. George? You must be George Linden. What do you say to Dr. Fintry's claims that increased levels of childhood asthma are the direct result of safety breaches at your chemical plant? That's outrageous. Say I'm nothing, George. You can try to silence your workers, Mr. Linda, but you can't silence the press. This story will be all over the front page. Look, like I said, I can get you to a place of safety anywhere you name. No one is going anywhere until we get to the bottom of this. But I wasn't even here. Councillor Thomas, please. Oh, very well. Stand by team. We definitely had a case. Got your pals? Thank you. Welcome to the Academy of Criminal Investigation. A serious crime has taken place in the hotel above and you are here to solve it. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Teddy. I'm 11 years old and I'm part of my school's forensic science club. Um, I'm Elliot and I'm 11 years old and I, I like interrogating my little sister. Hi, I'm Callum. I'm 13 and I always solve the mystery in detective novels and programmes. I have to say, if you solve this crime, then you gain entry into the Academy of Criminal Investigation. Listen up. This is what I know. Scientist John Fintry claims he was about to blow the whistle on safety breaches at local chemicals plant Chemizar. He says he was waiting at a table by the window in the conservatory for investigative journalist Marsha Kemp when somebody threw a rock at that window, showering him in broken glass. Wrapped around that rock was a note which read, keep quiet or else. I ran outside and found George Linden, the managing director of Chemizar, and Marsha Kemp in the car park, standing by their cars, and just a few moments later, another car drove up, driven by Stuart Thomas, a local councillor. Now, the question is, who threw the rock and why? And it's up for you to solve the mystery. Let's hear it from the suspects themselves. I'm convinced that there's a link between leaks from the Chemizar factory and the high levels of childhood asthma in the area. Somehow my boss, George Linden, discovered that I was going to blow the whistle. He confronted me earlier today at the plant. I told him that I was meeting a journalist at Kilcrammond House at five and that he couldn't stop me. I arrived at the hotel at 4.45. As I pulled up, I was shocked to see Linden. We argued again, but I told him my mind was made up. I headed through to the conservatory, where I'd arranged to meet the journalist, Marsha Kemp. I told her I would sit at my usual table by the window so that she would recognize me when she arrived. I'd been waiting for maybe ten minutes when suddenly this stone came crashing through the window. I was afraid something like this would happen. I said so to Marsha on the phone just yesterday that these are very powerful people at Chemizar with a lot at stake. When George phoned and told me what Fintry was going to tell the press, I was shocked. I'm on the board at Chemizar, but George assured me that the claim was totally unfounded. He said he was going to go to the hotel and offer Fintry money to reconsider. Well, George can be rather hot-headed, so uh, I said I would meet him and uh, help him negotiate. When I pulled into the car park, that journalist was haranguing George. Well, I've learned over the years, never trust a journalist. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if she was the one that smashed the window just to create a more dramatic headline. I'd heard that a national newspaper was planning to run a story on our firm and the source was John Fintry. It's all absolute nonsense, of course, but it could cause major damage to the company. I phoned my friend, Stuart Thomas, for advice. Stuart offered to meet me here and help me talk to Fintry. I got here first. When Fintry arrived, we argued again. I tried to phone Stuart to see where he'd got to, but I couldn't get any signal on my mobile. 
So I walked down to the garden to see if I could get some better signal there, but I just got his voicemail. It was when I was heading back that I heard the crash of breaking glass. I've been speaking to John Fintry over the phone about his story. He was worried about the line being tapped, so I agreed to come up and meet him in person. Can you believe it took me over ten hours to drive up here from London? And I was nearly run off the road by some idiot in a 4x4 a few miles from the hotel. When I came up the hotel drive, I saw a man, George Linden, running into the car park from the direction of the conservatory. Now, virtually, all crimes boil down to three things. Motive, means, and opportunity. After seeing what you've just seen, who do you think has the strongest motives? George Linden. Jo George Linden, definitely. George Linden. Because, because he doesn't want him to blab about his company. So right. That, that would be what the note meant. Teddy? I think George Linden, definitely, because he's the owner of the plant and he doesn't want his business to go down. Callum? I've, I'm interested in what the councillor said about um, suspects the journalists might have done it, just some more interesting storyline. Also, I think that the, the councillor himself could have done it because he also has something to do with the plant and he might have something against Marsha um, because, because he immediately said that, that she could have done it. The investigators suspect that George Linden and Stuart Thomas have motives for threatening the scientist John Fintry, but journalist Marsha Kemp could have staged the crime to create a more dramatic headline. This is your suspect timeline. Use this to plot where and when the suspects were during the crime. And over here, very important, is your incident board. Write down anything that you think is helpful towards you solving the crime, OK? Now's the time to put those original thoughts onto both boards. If you can do that, please. 45. Isn't that more for the time? We know that these two have something in common, because they, they obviously know each other. No, they know each other. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, well, John meets... He doesn't uh, like journalists, does he? So he's happy to blame her. When George Linden was on his way back, was that when the glass struck? Yeah. Those early observations show that the team are listening clearly to evidence, which is a key skill in investigating. Right. There's a lot of question marks around her, actually. The CCTV footage isn't great. Mm, thank you. Team, gather round. Back to the table. Our first piece of evidence has come through hard evidence. CCTV footage taken from the hotel's cameras. Use this to find out whether or not our suspects were telling the truth about where they were and when during the crime. I've got to go back up to the crime sink before it's compromised. OK, it's 4.45 and it's the car park. It is a man, two men, one of them's going away and it is... I think it's, it's the scientist. He goes to the conservatory. It's still 4.49. Oh, it's George Linden with his phone trying to get a reception. He's going to the right. He's got trying to get George the signal Linden. on his phone, trying to phone Stuart Thomas. And now it's 5.01. He's, he's running back. Someone else is here. 5.01. Let's have a look. I think it's probably Marsha Kemp. Someone else has driven up. It's the councillor. Yeah, I think it's the council. I think it's Stuart. And now they're having a big discussion about what's happened. And someone has marched off. I'm just trying to see who it is. Oh, it, it's, it's Simon. You go over there. Let's get this. Remember... Ha! At 4.45, the silver car drives up into the car park. OK. okay. So at 4.49, they're still talking? At 4.49, yeah. And then John goes. Could you set these up in the forensics lab, please? But Thank you. Team, gather round. Tell me, has the CCTV footage turned up any interesting leads? Yes. yes. Talk it through with me. Well, at 4.45, John Fintry said he was in the conservatory, which he wasn't. He was actually there at 4.49. On the CCTV, he was talking to George Linden at 4.45. In the statements, he said that he did actually speak to George Linden beforehand mm. because um, he was telling him where he was and what he was doing at five. The team think it is suspicious that John Fintry claims he was in the conservatory five minutes earlier than he actually was. Was this just an innocent mistake, or could he be lying to the investigation? If you could follow me up to the forensics lab, please. 
When a culprit commits a crime, they leave behind trace evidence, such as flakes of skin, hairs, obviously fingerprints and footprints, and sometimes even microscopic particles can be detected. Here is some of the evidence I found in the hotel above. Photographs which I took of the conservatory and the glass on the floor. See if you can use this to find out from where the rock was thrown. I mean, Fintry said that it was thrown from the outside in, but he may be lying. This is the rock, and this is the note. If you could dust that down for fingerprints, and also take a look at the handwriting. I've managed to take samples of the handwriting from all of the other suspects. They're all right-handed. Now, you may have noticed that the note was written on the back of a flyer for a new Chinese restaurant. I'm going to phone the number and find out where the flyering was done. So, get busy. So, if I connect the letters, what do you think of these two? Stuart Thomas. This is almost sort of the same. Just the top of these. Just more straight. Mm. Jean Fisher. Yeah. His ease and nothing like it. So, no way. Wait, this, this one. Marsha Kemp's. These yeah. ease could have been disguised mm. a little better. The, yeah, the, her K's and the Q's are very similar. Okay, so this has definitely come from yeah. the outside <clears> because that's. You know, it's yeah. gone straight in and here's all the glass. Note that. Elliot, why don't you check out the stone? Okay, I'll check out the stone. Okay. It's a root. Oh, yeah, it's a root. So that must the stone must have been in the glass. But where's he got it it's from? Exactly That's the question. Me. I think I think if you look at this, there's like a little wooden wood mm. wood area. You probably picked it up from around there. They should have they could have something. thrown it from the Ted's got something. Have you? I'm gonna let this print now, Elliot. Okay. Now, John Fintry. That's almost a match. Look. It looks like the same. Um, that one. You can just see faint, here. faint stuff on that, that one there. It's very clear. Oh, it must be it. I think right. we have a match. Team, back to your books. What did the forensic analysis reveal? It revealed that um, John Fintry had a fingerprint mark on the note, but we could, we, this could have been picking it up. With handwriting, we've got matches with Stuart Thomas and Marsha Kemp. The journalist and the counsellor. OK. Anything else? It revealed um, the rock came from the ground. Just mm -hmm. He had actually brought it with him. He's just picked it up from the ground because we found And it was thrown from the outside because the glass was on the inside. Yeah. OK. So, based on your investigation so far, four suspects, I'm going to allow you to talk to three. Who's your first one? We think Marsha Kemp. Why? Because we, just, we, th we think... Really suspicious. <laughs> when George Linden said that she could easily do it for a good story, and it does sound very convincing that she could actually do that. So, Marsha it is? Yes. Let's get her down. If you can take a seat here, please. Hello. What is your relationship like with John Fintry? I've never met John Fintry before today. We've spoken over the phone. Um, he was telling me his information about this story. But, to be honest, yesterday when I spoke to him, I got the feeling he was wavering, so I wanted to come up and meet him in person. What time did you actually arrive in the car park? I arrived at five o'clock. And what were you doing before that? I've been driving. I've been driving for hours. It took me ages to get here. Did you see anything about the four-wheel drive? Ten minutes before I got to the hotel, it almost ran me off the road. But the funny thing was, after I arrived, another 4x4 came up. And I'm pretty sure it was the same one. Registration STU, I think it started. Who do you suspect and why? I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out that Lyndon and Fintry were in this together. Fintry was losing his bottle. I think Lyndon might have offered him more money just to keep it quiet. Thank you, Miss Kemp. No more questions. Simon, was it? Mm. I'd love to run a piece on this place. Are you available for interview? I never give interviews. Oh, just this once. Team! You're doing very well. Very well. In... Yeah. Thank you very much. Based on your analysis, my scientists have plotted the trajectory of the stone. What do you make of that? He must have picked up the stones right. from the tree right. into the, the wood ar woody area. He threw it quite far. Yeah, that, so he, he's got to be pretty strong. 
back to the books, lovely. This has come through by fax. The flyer? Yeah, that's right. It's from the Chinese restaurant. I asked for a list of streets where the flyers were posted this morning. And there we are, look, there's, there's all the streets there. Where they live, where does each person live? We need to find out addresses. And Wait a minute, could have to find she out came addresses. from London, didn't she? Do you really think they're going to hand out flyers for that into London? Uh, yeah, so... I'll leave you think about it. So, so it's, not, it's not her. Marsha Kent couldn't... She have, can't have done it. Couldn't have done because the flyer. The couldn't queen. have written the flyer because... Oh, well, because she, she lives in London. Do you really think they're going to go around, ooh, let's go to London? So, someone has thrown a rock through the hotel conservatory window, threatening chemical scientist John Fintry to keep quiet or else. Investigative journalist Marsha Kemp was due to interview Fintry about his claims that leaks from the chemical factory where he works are causing childhood asthma in the area. George Linden, Fintry's boss, has come to the hotel to persuade him not to sell his story. The investigators spotted Linden on CCTV heading towards the conservatory just before the crime was committed. They also noticed Stuart Thomas, a local councillor and friend of George Linden, arriving at the hotel after the window was smashed. In the forensics lab, the investigators compared the suspect's handwriting to that on the note, though inconclusive, Stuart Thomas and Marsha Kemp's were the most similar. Under interrogation, Marsha said that a 4x4 with a registration beginning STU overtook her close to the hotel. So the team are coming up with loads of theories, but they really need to concentrate on the evidence. Are you? And when he'd done his phone, he came back out that way. Team, unfortunately time is marching on. Can you tell me where you're at with your investigation? We're thinking about George Linden. He, he is uh, one of our prime suspects at the moment. OK. I think it's Stuart and George. Stuart, Stuart and George have a connection in work. And, and so they've got a good opportunity to cover up for each other if they work together. So there's two people in the frame and you have two more suspects to interrogate. Oh, George, George Linden. Linden. Why? Because we noticed that when he, his phone went off, we noticed that he went into the direction of the conservatory. Towards he could have either done it or seen someone do it. Mm -hmm. And, from the and also we need to give him... It says it's from the woods and he's, wa he's walked towards the woods from the car park. And I think we could get That's where he wa went before with his phone. Let's bring him down. Sit down, please. What kind of place is this? It's a crime lab. Anyway, I'm the one asking questions here. We'll keep it civilised, then. So, George, where do you live? 21 Whitefriars Street, why? What connections do you have with Stuart Thomas? He's a good friend of mine, yeah. He's on my board of directors. Where did you go when you were on the phone at 4.49? I went down just past the conservatory, down to the gardens. Tried to phone Stuart, but couldn't get a signal on my mobile. Do you know anything about the Green Dragon? Is it a restaurant? Yeah. Don't know anything about it, no. Have you ever seen a Green Dragon flyer? No. No. What did you talk to John Fincher about? I was trying to persuade him not to talk to the journalist. OK. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. What kind of setup's this? You can't keep me in here. I'll see you in court, lad. Not if I see you first. Here's the map she wanted. That's exactly what I wanted. Thank you. Look at this team. Here's a map of Kilcraman Town Centre. And here's a map of the surrounding area of Kilcraman. And also, here's a list of addresses for our suspects. So maybe this will help cross-reference with the flyer information. OK, John's, John's place. place. St John's Place. St John's it Place. It's his car. Uh -huh. I knew it was his it car. It was John Fincher's car, just like we said. Don't so John Fintry had a flyer. Did That's Stuart Thomas it. have one? All right, let's have a look. We have a match. A good piece of detective work there. The team have established that both John Fintry and Stuart Thomas could have picked up the flyer for the Green Dragon restaurant earlier today. But will they notice from the map that Marsha Kemp had to drive through Kilcraman Town to get to the hotel? This means that she too could have picked up the flyer. Thanks a lot. Well, OK. Uh, just to inform you that Lyndon's mobile cannot get a signal in the car park, but does get a signal in the middle of the garden lawn and his mobile records also show that he did briefly call Stuart Thomas's mobile at 4.56.
what could have happened is he could have gone, okay, okay, I haven't done it yet, this is really bad, I need to go and do it. So first he will have phoned Stuart saying, hello, can you cut off Marsha Kemp from coming here because I haven't done it yet and I don't want her seeing it. So he could have got Stuart to cut her off so he knows where roughly she's going to be. OK. I've got to check the crime scene one more time. So it, it could be either of Stuart Thomas or John Fintry because they all work the same... Well, they, they've, all, they've got work ties. Maybe Stuart Thomas is trying to get something for himself. Yeah, maybe Stuart Thomas doesn't want to be... The sidekick. No, we... Team! We're not talking about... I've Brilliant. got some new evidence for oh, you. Oh, wonderful. OK. Brilliant. No problem. Here we are. What have we got? Some photographs. Some gloves. Gloves? Listen up. Um, fresh tyre marks have been found on a frosty grass verge around the back of the hotel by the gardener. Now, someone must Can have brought a vehicle around in the past couple of hours. Here's the, the photographs. Now, the tyres of all four suspects' cars have been checked. Grass was found on the two back tyres belonging to Stuart Thomas. Also, grass was found on the two left-hand tyres of Marsha Kemp I think, as I well. I think he probably went round to ah. do it. Also, whilst checking the cars, uh, my scientist noticed a pair of leather driving gloves in the glove compartment of Thomas's car. Where was Stuart Thomas when George Lyndon was on the phone? Well, we said that uh, Stuart yeah, Thomas yeah. arrived at 5.01. Stuart Thomas arrived at 5.01. Well, what time was he on the phone? George Lyndon was on the phone there. 4.49. So, he, so, so John leads to the reception. I'm going to have to pull you all together now. We need to find here. out who are you going to interrogate. Stuart, Stuart Thomas. I think we're going to go for... I think Stuart might be more... Yeah, Stuart Thomas. We might be able to get some more yeah. information out of him. You want to interrogate Stuart Thomas? Yes. Why? Because, because he's definitely suspicion going relevant on. to what's going on. Stuart Thomas? Yeah. Yep. yep. Let's bring him down. Sit down, please. Sit down, please. What would you do? I didn't know this Hello? place were down here. Um, it's an interview room. I'm going to ask you some questions. All right. OK. What's your car registration? Uh, STU489S. Right. Have you heard of the uh, great the Green Dragon, the restaurant? Oh, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a new restaurant in, uh, in town, yeah, I've heard of it. I haven't been there, though. No, how, do, how have you heard of it? Oh, well, uh, you know, I'm a councillor. I heard yes, about yeah. all the new places that are opening. Very good. Did you lock uh, Marsha Kemp off the road on your way? I wouldn't know. I must have uh, passed a few people, but I wouldn't know. Was she driving? You would have, I'm sure you would have noticed if you knocked someone off a road. Well, I don't know, I was barreling along, you know. Um, what did George say on the phone to you? He just left me a, a message on my answer phone. My phone was switched off, I was driving, you know. It was just a message to ask me to hurry up, you know. Why did he want you to hurry up? I don't know, well, presumably because he was going to speak to, uh, to Fintry, you know, and I said I was going to be there to give him a hand. Why are you... Car, car tracks found outside the hotel? Well, because I were at the hotel. They were kind of at the back of the hotel. At the back of the hotel? Mm. Oh. I'd, are you sure about that? I mean, I, I only drove into the car park. That's what I I've been told. Oh, well, I, don't, I think that's wrong. I don't OK. Really... Um, what, what do you think about um, John uh, Fintry? I don't really believe that what he says is true, you know. I mean, that would be a terrible terrible oh, blow right. to the uh, neighbourhood and it, it would it would be a shock to all of us. Um, OK, uh, thank you for your time. Well, you're welcome. You're in here as well then, George. I've been here ages, mate. Council Thomas, we won't keep you long, hopefully. Team, we really do need to think about who the criminal is. Motive means opportunity. We can't detain the suspects for any longer. Trust nobody. OK. Right. right. He's got the means. Um, Stuart's got the means. He has. Stuart's he got could them. have done it. And he's got the motive, which means... Motive for helping George as well. Helping George as with, friends. His, with his, as his as friends. friends. The opportunity there. He does have a, a minor opportunity. Because you can Why? tell by the pictures. He's, he's been in the hotel grounds with his car. And he's the back. reversed into the back. Why would he go to the back? It's out of the way, isn't it? Come so he could sneak round. On the map, yeah. Wait. But he could have left his car. 
Mm. And maybe come round to do that. That would take too long, just but two it would minutes. take too long. So it must have been five oh two. And then one minute later the council arrives. Yeah. We've got it. It's time to bring down the final suspect. Why am I in here? You can't possibly think I've anything to do with this. I'm sorry, Mr. Fintry, but you are in there for a reason. I'll be back shortly. Team, you've seen all the evidence. You've interrogated three of our four suspects. I need to know who you think is your prime suspect. Stuart, Stuart Thomas. Sir, Stuart, Stuart, Thomas. Thomas. Stuart Thomas. Yes. Why? He's got the means, the motive and the opportunity. And we know that where he was at the time. And what times he arrived, actually arrived when it was after the crime, a few minutes after. Okay. So he could have time to get back. He, he got the flyer because he lives yeah. a place where the flyer was given out. And you so all agreed on this? Yeah. We all agreed on this. Let's see if you're right. Yes! It was Stuart Thomas. After he had the phone call from George Linden, Stuart drove to kill Crammond at top speed, nearly knocking Marsha Kemp off the road on the way. He drove round the back of the hotel and scribbled the note using the flyer he'd found on his windscreen. Because he was a regular visitor to the hotel, he knew that there was a way through the gardens from the back drive. He also knew that Fintry liked to sit in the conservatory. Thomas must have narrowly missed Linden when he cut through the gardens. He must have wrapped the note around the rock and attached it somehow. After he'd thrown the stone at the window, he ran back to his car, reversed out, and drove into the hotel car park as if he'd just arrived. You're all free to go. Thank you very much for your time, Councillor Thomas. You stay right there. Another crime successfully solved. Well done. You must be so happy. And you've gained entry into the academy as well. Who did you suspect?